Hi, we're going to look at the idea of the sampling distribution for X bar, the sample mean. So what this applet is going to do is we're going to take samples from this parent population that I specify here. It's going to collect sample values here. When it's done with those samples, and in this case we're going to use a sample size of 25, it's going to collect those samples. Once it's collected those samples, it's going to take an average for the sample and we're going to get a sample mean down on this graph. So let's animate this to see what it looks like. So here's 25 values being selected from the parent population, right? So there's 25 randomly selected values and we end up with a sample mean for that group. So this group of 25 randomly selected values from the parent curve had a mean of 16.12 and that's where that's being given or being put on this number line. So between 0 and 32, which is what the number line shows, 16.12 is about there and so it's putting the mean of these 25 values on the curve. Let's animate another sample of 25. So this is a new random sample of 25 values from this parent population and we get a new mean. The mean for that group was 17.13 and it gets plotted right next to our previous mean. Let's animate another one. There's another 25 values. And again, we see another mean. This time the mean is 15.77, so virtually in the same place as the first mean we had. Okay, so we're going to do this over and over and over again. Let's do it 10,000 times. And what we're looking to see is what is the shape of the resulting curve for X bar. Okay, so there's our curve, and you can see that if you place the normal curve around it, it's perfectly normal, this curve, right? So the original parent curve was normal. The curve for X bar here looks to be perfectly normal. Let's look at the mean for the original parent population. It was 16. The mean for this curve is 15.99, so virtually 16. It's just off by like a rounding error, correct? Now the standard deviation for the parent curve here is about 5 and so for this curve it's 1.02 so it's about a fifth as varied right so when you compare the variation for the two groups which is illustrated by this red box they're using here that's supposed to represent a visual representation of the variation in the population so when you look at this one it's far smaller than this one and it's smaller by a factor of about 5 right it's about one fifth as uh, varied as the curve above Okay, so what we see here is that the sample mean curve, the curve in blue, which is the curve for the sample mean when drawing samples of size 25, it appears to be bell-shaped, it appears to be located in the same place, in other words the mean is centered in the same place, and we see that the standard deviation for the parent curve is far larger than this one, it's larger by a factor of about 5. Alright, well maybe bell curves produce bell curves when you sample from them. So let's talk about what would happen if you have a uniform distribution, right? So let's animate 25 randomly selected values from that population. All right, so the first sample produces a mean of 16.05 for these randomly selected values, and we get a mean on the curve here then at 16.05. Let's do it again, another sample. And we get another mean. This time the mean is only 13.49, so it ends up over here. And let's do it 10,000 times to see what we get. All right, so a sample of 10,000 of these produces a curve that, again, is approximately normal, right? Pretty close to normal. And we see that the mean for this parent population is 16. The mean here is 15.97. So, again, about 16 when you round off to whole numbers or even to... Um, you know, the tenths place. Then you see the standard deviation here is about 10 or 9.52. Here it's about 2. So again, it seems to be off or different from each other by about a factor of 5. So again, we have basically a bell curve for the sample means. We have that the mean is essentially in the exact same place and we end up having much less variation, right? And the variation is different by a factor of 5. This is 5 times smaller than the one above. All right. Now, let's go ahead and look at another scenario. It could be that the bell curve was appearing down here simply because the two curves we had up above were symmetric. And, you know, the bell curve is symmetric, so there may be that connection between the two types of curves. Let's try it with a skewed distribution to see if we still get the same bell curve shape here. So I'll animate a sample. You'll see that a lot of the values will end up over here because that's where the bulk of all the probability lies, right? You won't get too much out at the end. So the value here we get is the average value, sorry, for these 25 values is 9.29. That's what's plotted down here. Let's animate a second sample. 
So again, the bulk of the numbers come in over here. The mean turns out to be pretty much in the same place, a little bit different. Let's try to do it 10,000 times, see what we come up with. All right, so even after 10,000 times of this, we see the curve is pretty bell curve shape, right? So it's almost bell curved. And then when you look at the mean, the mean is 8.08. .08. Here it's 8.07. So again, it's only off by like a slight amount, just like a rounding error. Eventually, essentially what we're saying here is the means for the two curves are in the same place. However, of course, this curve is pretty much symmetric where this one is highly skewed, but the means are in virtually the same place. Once again, we see that the distribution for the sample means is basically bell-shaped in nature, a bell, a bell curve, essentially. And then we see that the standard deviation here is quite larger than this one, and that's, again, a difference of about a factor of five, right? So it looks like this number here is about uh, five times larger than this number here. The reason why it's five times larger, we're going to see later, is that there is a theorem called the Central Limit Theorem that tells us that certain attributes of the distribution for x bar will be constant. So in other words, no matter what curve we're looking at, the distribution for x bar will always have a mean that's equal to the parent population's mean. So this blue curve, the curve for x bar, will always have the same mean as the parent population. It will also always have a standard deviation that is smaller than the parent population by a factor of the square root of n, the sample size. So our sample size here is 25, the square root of 25 is 5, and that's why we're seeing that this is smaller by, than this number here by a factor of about 5. That's why this standard deviation is about 5 times larger than this one. All right, good. So we've seen it with three curves that virtually um, in all three cases, we had a nice bell shape appear here. What if I try to create a curve that's really crazy looking, right? So I create my own custom curve and I make it look really wild looking so it doesn't look like anything we've ever seen before. So this is highly skewed. You know, the mean and the median are very separated from one another. Let's see if we can end up uh, getting a similar effect down here. So I'm going anim to animate sorry, another 25 randomly selected values from this population. The mean for those 25 values is 15.88. We get it down here on the curve in the same location. So there's our blue mean plotted. Let's animate another sample. So you see again, most of our values kind of around where the peaks are on this curve, right? And then we get another mean here. The mean for these 25 values was 17.06, so we get another mean there. Let's go ahead and take 10,000 of them, see what we get. All right, so at 10,000, again, it looks pretty bell-shaped. The fit isn't maybe perfect, because it's a little higher on this side than it is on this side, but it's pretty normal. It would get a lot more normal-looking, actually, if our sample size here was larger. It turns out that this kind of normalizing effect where the, the curve for x-bar becomes normal um, happens more readily at higher sample sizes. So, you know, at a sample size of 30, it's going to look more bell-shaped. At a sample size of 500, it'll look much more bell-shaped, right? So the idea is that, you know, the larger the sample size, the more perfect this approaches the normal curve, right? The more like the normal curve it'll look. So it's pretty normal as it is. You can see there's a little bit of asymmetry here, but other than that, um, it's virtually normal. You can also see that the mean is in the exact same place here, right? 16.82, 16.82. That's something I said that would always happen. And then we see the standard deviation again is different by, again, roughly a factor of five. And that's, again, because of the fact that we have a sample size of 25. If we had a sample size of, say, 36, the difference would be a factor of six, right? This one would be six times as small as that one. Okay, so that's basically what we see from the applet. Later on in the notes, you're going to cover in Chapter 6 the theorem, Central Limit Theorem, and then we'll lay all the things we saw here out in a more formal fashion.